Welcome back to 70 Eyes with Replicant, a series of videos where we're developing user interfaces for the web with Clojure, Replicant, and functional programming. So in our previous episode, we developed this nice little counter. And uh, since there are six more tasks coming up, I thought it would be nice if they didn't just all display on the same page. So in this little interlude episode, we're going to build some navigation for our uh, little showcase here. We're using Daisy UI. So let's have a look at the components it has. I think there should be a tab bar of some sort here. Let's see. Tabs. There we go. So something like this would be nice. A tab box. I'm just going to copy this HTML. I'll create a layout CLJC. And then we can use HTML to hiccup convert region. So here's the hiccup we want to create. I'll call it tab bar, and it's going to take in a bunch of views and also a uh, current view. Tabs. Okay, so then we're going to do four. So each view is going to have an ID and some and a text. Views. Um, the text goes here, and then we'll put a um, cond around this one, and we'll say you know if the ID is equal to the current view, then it's um, actually let's do yeah current. Then we'll do class tab active. If it's not current. It's going to need a click action. We could also do a switch in, I guess, just do like this. And then the question is, you know, what do we put in here? Okay, so now we have the top bar. We can go back here and, um, hmm, okay, GUIs layout as layout. We have this one. Let's actually move this down here, just to extract the replicant render call. Now this can just do this one. And then we can do div, uh, put some margins around, and then put the layout in here. But it needs some views. So what views do we have? Uh, well, we have, we have the counter. Counter uh, could be a keyword counter, and that's about the only view we have right now. Uh, the next one is going to be temperatures, uh, so we'll have the two of them. Uh, then I can pass in the counter and the views. So there's the tab bar, and then there's the counter. I think the counter now also has some margins, it does not need that. That's very close, <laughs> very close. Let's put some margin on this one. There we go. The question is what happens when I click this one? Right now, nothing happens because it just says a bunch of question marks. We need another action. So the action we could do here would be something like uh, set current uh, view and then the ID. So, Let's move this down here. Um, I'm going to implement this then, and then we're going to discuss that solution a little bit. So here we have our actions. So set current view, that's going to be from the layout, set current view. That's going to do a swap, store, a search, current view, and then uh, the args is going to be something like that. And then up here, we have to do current view from the state. Okay, so now none of them are selected. But if I click it, it's going to select it. This is okay, I guess it would be nice to have a default. So we could do or views first. ID, something like that. Um, 
that's going to keep this one selected. So if I refresh the page now, the counter is still selected. And then we can say uh, get current view state. And I can go back up here and then we'll go like this because now I want to have I also wanted to use it to select what to render down here. So current view, if it's the counter, we'll render this one. Otherwise, we'll just render, you know, select uh, your UI of choice. So actually, maybe we didn't want the default. We'll just do the current view instead. So if I refresh, it's going to select your UI of choice, and I can do counter and there's the temperatures you know check this out both of these are now doing swaps and they are very specific and i'm not convinced that we really want to have a lot of very specific stuff going on here doing very similar stuff in here so here's the suggestion this is the command and let's see if we can express this as data as well as the effect. So this is like the command I want to send. This is the effect it's going to have on the system. What would that look like? Well, instead of doing the swap here, I once again return a list of stuff to do. And this time it's an effect. And the effect is, um, you know, this could be rewritten as swap store search in number and then a specific number it wouldn't be atomic like this one is but for in the context of our app they would be interchangeable so let's do effect search in and we'll pass in number and here i can just do ink number from store now we have pure data expressing this operation. And same thing down here. Effect is search in current view and then the ID. Okay. Now we need someone to carry out the effects for us. So let's create a function called process effect. It's going to need the store and the effect and its arguments. This will be another case. And then we have effect search in is a swap on the store where we do a search in. And then we can just basically do apply with the args. So how do we call this one? Uh, well, we need to collect all the effects. So each action could return a list of effects. So we'll make this a, uh, this needs to be a map cat then. Um, like so. And then after we've map cat it, the actions or sorry the effects we could do a map for us uh, actually run process effect and pass in the store and now it's going to process one effect after the other this stuff i can extract and we could call it something like uh, perform actions and it just gets the state because it's pure so state event data and then we'll do this stuff we can remove that stuff and then okay store yes now still works still works everything still works so this is good because now we only have one swap that's a move in the right direction the next thing i want to uh, address is that these are specific to the individual features and do not belong inside here. So instead of this case, uh, maybe we could do something like we could grab these two and move them over to the counter namespace and we'll say form actions. 
state action uh, perform action actually is, is good and then we can say when like that so when the action is this thing then we'll return these effects uh, if it's not that it's going to return nil so we can make this uh, function kind of fall through it's going to be local now like this which is this is a sign that we're moving in the right direction uh, we don't have any args right now so we can just do this and then we can grab this one and move it over to layout perform action state you know action args and once again we'll do action or so when we're here we're gonna do this and then yeah same problem again we're not going to use the state there that's good and then we can go in here and we can just simply do or counter perform action uh, or layout perform action so now I have this nice little dispatch. You know, if you wanted to, you could use a multi method or whatever to to kind of make it more loosely coupled. Um, personally, I like the directness of this approach because you can read the code and you can navigate in and find out how things are connected, which I th think makes it easier to read the code. Anyway, uh, we now have the actions in the local namespaces. We only have one swap, which is very good. Uh, the last thing I want to do is in layout, we have this set current view, which does this surprisingly many things in the UI is just a matter of putting something in the state. And it's so common that it would be very useful if we could just do here, action search in, then we wouldn't have needed this function at all. So let's try that. Current view get rid of this go back here actually we can just get rid of this just so we have the hook there and then we can go here and then or we could say case first action is search in then we do effect search in and then into rest of the actions and then if we didn't match that one then we have a known action and for good measure we can print the action here as well which will be useful because then we can see it in the console so let's try this i click here it says a search in current level counter search in and then here ink number and there you go and now we can build a whole lot of interesting uis with just like this simple structure here i don't think the layout's going to have custom action so i'm just going to go ahead and remove this one and take us down here. That's it. I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, we are well set up now to add new features to our app. Let's commit this. Get set up for temperature calculations. Thank you for watching and I hope you join me in the next episode. Bye bye.